Hi, and welcome to our Dairy Innovation Hub research project. This is the core team with researchers from the University of Wisconsin like Paul Stoy, Ankur Desai and Robert Annex, and researchers from the U.S. Dairy Forage Research Center like Alison Duff and Heathcliff Friday. And this is me, Susie. I'm a postdoc at the University of Wisconsin. We are also collaborating with John Gaba from the U.S. Dairy Forage Research Center, Valentin Picasso from the University of Wisconsin, and Tim Cruz from the Land Institute. Fieldwork support is provided by Chris Neiman, Malachi Pershey, and Matt Volnick from the U.S. Dairy Forage Research Center. This project wouldn't be possible without the farm employees and the stars of the show. Our main goal is to increase the agricultural and economic sustainability of Wisconsin dairy farms. Wisconsin dairy farms make up one quarter of all U.S. dairies, their second in pounds of milk produced each year, but most importantly, the vast majority of Wisconsin dairies are family-owned. But just last year, Wisconsin lost 10% of its dairy farms. Our main objectives are to improve soil health, lower greenhouse gas emissions, and to increase the economic profitability of dairy farms. The majority of a typical dairy cow diet mainly consists of grains like corn. Corn is highly nutritional, but carbon inputs to soils are low due to its short growing season and because all biomass gets harvested. To improve carbon sequestration and soil health, diverse cropping systems are key, which can include cover crops or intercropping with alfalfa. Perennials like alfalfa, corinza, and pasture allow for year around vegetation cover, which can help sequester more carbon. Dual crops like currenza may increase profits by offering grain and forage. When comparing corn and pasture during spring and summer, both systems will receive the same amount of energy, but the bare soil of annual cornfields will emit greater long-wave radiation, but have lower evapotranspiration during early spring. A greater sensible heat flux of the bare soil during daytime can lead to drying of the soil, while pastures will retain more water. Perennial vegetation can sequester carbon year-round compared to corn, which only adds carbon to the system during the growing season. A dairy greenhouse gas budget is mainly driven by methane and CO2 emissions from cows and manure storage. Emissions from manure applications are relatively small but include a major greenhouse gas, nitrous oxide. Plants can help mitigate these harmful greenhouse gases by taking up CO2 from the air, but they also release CO2 through respiration. A farm greenhouse gas budget also includes the export of milk and imports like feed or fertilizer. We'll be using a method called eddy covariance that measures CO2 and water fluxes, wind speed and wind direction, methane, and meteorological variables like temperature and rainfall. Other measurements, we will be taking our soy samples from the different cropping systems. We will analyze these samples for microbial activity and diversity, for soil nutrients like carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, for soil texture like clay and sand, and for soil compaction like bulk density. This is important, especially in Wisconsin, where less compacted soils may take up more water, whereas more compacted soils may lead to nutrient runoff. We'll also be collecting information on plant health using a multispectral drone and plant samples to analyze forage quality. With this data, we'll be able to understand how perennials can improve soil health and mitigate harmful greenhouse gas emissions, which can be used to increase profits for dairy farmers using credits for carbon sequestration, less nutrient inputs, and evapotranspiration. There's something you can do too. Be willing to pay fair prices for your milk products and buy locally from your hard-working Wisconsin dairy farmers.